Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Andrew Rimby, and welcome back to the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. So this is a special Thanksgiving week episode. It's coming out on Black Friday. So happy, you know, after Thanksgiving Day to you all. Hope you all are rested and relaxed. I am joined with two very esteemed special honorees here in the Rimby household. My mother, Kathy Rimby. Hi, mom. Hi, everybody. And then my father, David Rimby. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so we have some special treats in store before we begin to talk about our review of Killers of the Flower Moon, the movie that we both, well, all of us saw. Um, and I also want to recognize today is Native American Heritage Day. We'll get into what that means. When was that signed into law? And there's even, you know, the Native American community's view of it, too, is important to bring into the conversation since none of us are Native American. Um, and I want to make sure we represent their voice, at least, especially since we're going to talk about a movie that focuses on the Native Americans. Um, OK, so first, I want to thank the Soapbox NY, Janine, the co-owner uh, and Mariana, happy, you know, Thanksgiving and holidays to them. I got my parents special treats. So my mom saw this, if you want to hold it up. This was gifted to us by Janine. It is a spiced pumpkin hand soap. So it's still, as my mom likes to say, fall. And she always wants to celebrate fall until the nth degree and the end of it until we go into the winter. So still pumpkin season. And then here, mom, what did I get you? I'm excited for her to see these. You can hear it, the gift for those listening. <laughs> so what are they, mom? Ugly Christmas newsies. Yeah. Cozy little feet coverings and more. Yeah. So they're cute uh, holiday slippers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and cute. you can hear the jingle jangle, <laughs> which... My boyfriend, Lawrence, does not like, and he said he's going to castrate the jingle jangle bells and cut them <laughs> off. I was like, well, if you have to. Um, and then my dad also got slippers, but his are um, stockings and candy canes. And my mom has the Christmas trees. With um, the bells. He doesn't have the bells. Yeah, he doesn't have the bells. Okay. And then. Oh, he does. Oh, he does have bells. No, they have bells on all of them. Um, and then. For the first time ever, my parents are going to try Pignoli cookies, which are very popular Italian-American, like North Jersey and New York City based. So, Long Island. yeah, if you all remember your New Jersey, if we want to open it, mom, uh, New Jersey Housewives fans, Teresa Judice said they're her favorite cookies. And Melissa Gorga brought her sprinkle cookies, which my parents always have sprinkle cookies. Um, we have a lot of sprinkle cookies in South Jersey, but I don't know. I'll have to keep my eye out here in South Jersey if I see them. I'm sure they sell them in some of the Italian bakeries. But um, Teresa said she brought me sprinkle cookies and I threw them out in the trash. I only eat Pignoli cookies. So in honor of Teresa Judice, okay. this is my parents, Teresa, their first time ever trying a Pignoli cookie. So I'm just going to like break a little. Okay, so here you go, mom. Thank you. And then I'll give some to my dad. Okay. And then I'll eat a little. Okay. I want your honest reactions. What do you think about the Pignoli cookie? Mm -hmm. We're all chewing, so bear with um, us, everyone. A little too sweet for my taste. Did you think it would but taste good. almond? Very almond. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I, I a lot of almond. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like it? It's good. Do you like it better than okay. a sprinkle cookie? Yes, I'm not a fan of sprinkle cookies. They, they have a personally. Sprinkle cookies have a tendency, I think, to be drier than this stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess Pignoli cookie for the win here. Even though I think yeah. what I got from Uncle Giuseppe's for our Thanksgiving is gonna was a more popular hit, which is tiramisu, mm -hmm. almond squares, and limoncello. I mean, tiramisu is always my favorite. 
I'd rather have tiramisu. Okay. True. So Native American Heritage Day is um it was signed into law by President George W. Bush. I'm reading from Wikipedia, everyone. Um, introduced by Congressman Joe Baca from California. And it was supported by the National Indian Gaming Association and 184 federally recognized tribes um, and designated November 28, 2008 as a day to pay tribute to Native Americans for their many contributions to the United States. Um, it encourages Americans of all backgrounds to observe the day after Thanksgiving as Native American Heritage Day through ceremonies, activities. It encourages public elementary and secondary schools to enhance student understanding of Native Americans uh, by providing classroom instructions focusing on their history, achievements, and contributions. But there is criticism. In addition to calling Thanksgiving the National Day of Mourning, some Native Americans believe it is poor taste for Native American Heritage Day to be on Black Friday, a day of excess and gluttony and greed and aggressive capitalism, which itself falls after a holiday that amidst the murder and mutilation yes. of natives, mourn the millions of indigenous people who died as a result of aggressive settler colonialism. So, and is Wikipedia accurate? Uh -huh. okay. Now it's very, um, there's a lot of references here of the sources. Okay. It goes through like a peer review source now because you can use it for essays now, which you used to not when I was an undergrad, we could never use Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Now, now you can. <laughs> now I'm going to call. Okay. So have you both, like, did you both know a lot going into Killers of the Flower Moon about Native American history from um, like the early 1900s or e even what we see with Osage County in the movie? I knew you no, <clears throat> no, I wasn't familiar with um, the Native Americans. And I mean, I knew Oklahoma had Native Americans, but not. Um, I learned more from the movie. Yeah. So mm -hmm. did you like how much in your schooling? Um, like, did you learn about Native American history? Not a lot. Definitely did not know anything about the uh, Native American Indians in Oklahoma. Yeah, that's for sure. More of the Native American Indians in uh, the Mid Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because where we are right now in New Jersey, this was the Lenny Lenape mm -hmm. or Lenny Lenapi. I think that's Lenapi is the word how they pronounce it. But that was their. This is indigenous to their. Um, uh you know culture and being on long island i've learned like where i live was the satoka native americans which is how we get the word satoka now um but i think it's very important to recognize that wherever we're celebrating thanksgiving we're celebrating in america on native american land um so i thought this movie was really important to come out before Thanksgiving and to give us this history of the um, Osage Native Americans. Uh, so, okay. What I do want to ask you both is what did you think about going into this movie? Um, Martin Scorsese, you know, directed it. Um, and I know he had a lot of conversations with Native Americans consulting with tribes to make sure it was respectful, like it was historically accurate. Um, How much did you both, you know, dad, starting with you, know about this movie going into the theater? I uh, saw part of the trailer along with, I think, an interview that Martin gave regarding his uh, creative process by using consultants that were Native American Indians, um, along with uh, the actors and the other uh, workers that were involved in the cast. Yeah, so like you didn't know that it was based on this 2017 book, also called Killers of the Flower Moon by David Grant. Mm -hmm. I did know that. 
Okay. I saw something on TV about a week before I saw the movie. Okay. Well, courtesy of the Port Jeff Library, I have the book in my hand. Um, it says um, it was the best book of the year in 2017. In the 1920s, the richest people per capita in the world were members of the Osage Nation in Oklahoma. Wow. The richest people per capita in the world. After oil was discovered beneath their land, they rode in chauffeured cars and lived in mansions. Then one by one, the Osage began to be killed. Molly Burkhart watched as her family became a prime target. Her relatives were shot and poisoned. Other Osage were also dying under mysterious circumstances. And many of those who investigated the crimes were themselves murdered. As the death toll rose, the case was taken up by the newly created FBI and its young secretive director, J. Edgar Hoover. Struggling to crack the mystery, Hoover turned to a former Texas Ranger named Tom White, who put together an undercover team, including a Native American agent. They infiltrated this last remnant of the Wild West and together with the Osage began to expose one of the most chilling conspiracies in American history. So, um, you know, with all of that in mind, that's our plot for this movie. Um, what did you think of how the plot unfolds uh, with the characters, with the setting, um, and how this epic, like, three and a half hour movie is unraveled to us? I thought it was done in a a good sequence. I think it was well paced. Um, how the characters were introduced and just everything that it kept my interest the whole time. Yeah. And then dad, what did you think about, you know, even like our opening sequence? Do you remember the opening? Yes. I, it gave you a little bit most people, if this was done as strictly as a documentary film, probably would have tuned out probably in the first hour. So I know, Dad, you were saying that um, if this film had been a documentary, you think that the audience would not have been as invested or interested. And why is that, in your mm -hmm. opinion? Well... As a three and a half hour movie versus if it was a mini series as a documentary, it would have been a different story. But three and a half hours straight, I think uh, people would have not been as gauged into the uh, story if it was completely a documentary. There was enough, sometimes too much, characters involved in the movie. And sometimes it was hard to understand all the relationships of the characters. Mm -hmm. If I have one criticism on the movie, I think being three and a half hours long, they could have done a little better job clarifying the relationship of each of the characters. Mm -hmm. Well, I confused mm -hmm. at certain parts, mm -hmm. especially towards the end, who was related to whom. Yeah, well, and remember... I thought it was so important. The opening sequence of the film wasn't um, with Leonardo DiCaprio or the white settlers. Remember Correct. what the opening is? It's actually the Osage tribe. Correct. Yes. And it's their rituals. Yeah. And it's them basking in the oil. Like the oil starts mm -hmm. to like, you know, sprout yes. up and they're like bathing in it in a way, which I think is just a good metaphor for how um, their land is going to be exploited. Like something they saw as natural to their land, which it is oil is seen as um, a capitalist commodity by these settlers. Um, you know, do you think that we still um, are living under an exploitative system when it comes to oil? I don't know enough about that, uh, but it was very eye-opening how the Osage uh, community was affected by the oil for good and bad. Mm -hmm. And I think 
towards the end of the movie, you realize that they realized it might have been more of a negative than a positive. Yeah, so we have yes. our three like leading actors are Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, and Lily Gladstone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Leonardo is Ernest Burkhardt. Um, it says here, a greedy, good-looking, but gullible World War I veteran who was used as a pawn in the murders. Robert De Niro mm -hmm. is William King Hale, Ernest's uncle, and the man behind the Osage murders. And Lily Gladstone is Molly Kyle, Ernest's wife. And then, like, there's um, Tom White, who's the agent leading the murder investigation. Um, John Lithgow is Peter Leeward, the lead prosecutor in the trials of Hale and Burkhardt. Um, Tantu Cardinal is Lizzie Q, Molly's mother, which is like a very... Well, let's start with Molly's mother. What did you think of Molly and her family? The mom, the sisters... Like, why was it, do you think that the film did justice by really showing the Osage families and specifically Molly's family? I, I think the character development with her family was very well done. Uh, they seem to be pretty much, except for the one sister, a very strong set of women um wait what do you mean except for the one sister i need you to expand on that i forget the sister that's okay but it. one of her younger sisters the one that was rebellious rebellious and i would say more of a party person was that anna anna <clears throat> anna. anna anna brown yes anna. yes yeah i thought i thought overall the women very strong but wait is she not strong because she was a flapper I mean, what kind of I, correlation are you making here? I'm making a correlation that I don't know if she was always um, mindful what was going on. Well, don't you think she was exploited by the white set of, like the white men to party? Like they really, we saw, because you know, Native American tribes now, there's a reason that there's an alcohol dependency yes, and I, a drug I, dependency. Yeah, it's well, because I, the white people gave them drugs to ease like not ease but to basically manipulate them oh i i definitely agree yeah. with that like is it her fault that's what i'm saying or is she being used in this game of cat and mouse i think she's definitely used i yeah. think the other women were just had stronger uh fortitudes not to let that happen as much yeah well everyone out there you know i'm sure <laughs> fall on different sides of my my debate with my dad but um but i think it's a productive debate because i think it shows us what um the film is really doing justice to in my opinion is it really um it's not a fantasy of the native americans like it really is showing the travesty you know their homes burning and like that it's not just happenstance that they're dying or Anna Brown. I mean, she was murdered, like, right. She was murdered by mm -hmm. um, a freak. And then like her body's found mm -hmm. there. Um, but her husband, I forget, is her husband involved in that murder? I'm trying to see. Because. Well, wait, then there's the. Um, there's the other sister, because then there's sister. a sister. No, I'm thinking of the other sister, the right. one where the husband um, is very empathetic. And right. he's the one where they live in like the, um, they live near the downtown. Right. Like, because there's like the downtown homes that are yes. all close together, more like row homes. And then there's like where Molly lives with Ernest, which is more of like on the, um, like in the countryside and they like have all the right. acres of land. Um, but I thought it was so devastating when um, the one sister is killed in the explosion. Oh, yeah, it's a spoiler alert. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, I thought that it shows you, even if you're white and you marry into the native American tribe, if you're not going to help exploit the land for oil and get as much money as you can, you also are disposable in this 
conspiracy that was happening. Well, I think the other thing that should be well, they... uh, st stated, if people haven't seen the movie, is that by the Native Americans through different of their family ties would pass then their shares of their inheritance go to a, another a Native American relative. Mm -hmm. The point is that the, I'll say because it was the case, the white men that married these Native American women, they were basically the last ones standing and they, then they got benefits of all their money. Mm -hmm. And that's something I think was clearly stated throughout the movie as it moved on, you saw how more and more that came into plot. Well, and what's interesting is it doesn't matter in the Osage law, it doesn't matter your gender. Anyone gets the inheritance. Like women get the money Correct. too, which is actually like I'm thinking, I kept saying to Janine, who shout out to Janine from the soapbox, she was watching with me the movie. And we said it, it was so interesting that this is the same time period as The Great Gatsby. And you, if you think of The Great Gatsby, all about old and new money colliding with, um, you know, white Americans, that women are held back. Like, that's why maybe I was pushing back with you, Dad, about Anna Brown, because she still does have power in terms of her role in the Native American community when it comes to inheritance and land. And guess what women didn't have who are white? Inheritance. Women weren't given the right to vote. Right. No. So like even right. these white women who are in Osage County, they're not given rights. Right. And I am thinking, were any of the white women married to Native American men? I'm trying to. No, I did not. They, that was not depicted in the movie. Yeah, I didn't. No, that see was that. not depicted. At all. Yeah, I wonder why do you think that white women were? Well, what do you think? You know, like even um, Robert De Niro's character. What's his view of these women? Like, does he see these women as independent people or does he see them as just easy to manipulate into getting all the, like, just getting as much of this oil and resource as possible? Well, I, I think that his role changed throughout the movie. Yeah. In the beginning, he was portrayed as being a ally mm -hmm. of the Osage right. people. As the movie developed, you saw his character change mm -hmm. where you saw that he was becoming more interested in the money. And at the very end, that's all he really cared about, mm -hmm. no matter whatever means it took to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the other thing that came out of the movie, too, was just in a broader sense was the fact that how anybody, it, not just Native Americans or anybody, if you're not properly uh, educated or used to having money, you sort of become naive of how to protect your assets, slash in this case money, and how there will be other people that might be coming out to get your money. And that was very clear that these people all of a sudden had money overnight and they were not prepared how to deal right. with that wealth. Mm. Oh, you're saying how because the um, Native Americans had such desire, the Osage had such desirable land um, and like fell into a lot of money that it was a recipe for manipulation since they didn't really well also it wasn't mm -hmm. i wanted to know what was happening with the currency because um the price of their goods from yeah. like these um white settler markets or whatever mm -hmm. was ha like they had to actually be sponsored by a white person i right it was very segregated like you had to have someone represent you in a bank. Like a Native American person couldn't go into a bank and actually take out money. I think that wasn't clearly defined, 
it sounded to me that the white people try to make some of the uh, Osage people be deemed to be incompetent where they needed to have a guardian. Mm -hmm. and that was done on purpose. So they had additional control. Mm -hmm. And then they needed to go to their guardian to ask for some money to do whatever it was they needed. And I think that was another way to control the Osage people. Yeah. So do you think that this movie really helped? Like, is something where we're supposed to really sit in this uncomfortable space of, like, as especially as people who are white, you know, who have, you know, immigrant um, stories, but settled and like, you know, whether the Native Americans were still there when they settled or not, you know, this is not, this is borrowed land from the Native Americans. Do you think this really had a space and reckon with how do we make amends with Native American communities? And like, we need to do better as a country. I didn't necessarily get that as the overwhelming outcome. I got more to knowing the individual story of the Osage people. Right. They also tied it in a little bit to Black Wall Street, which was mm -hmm. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. which I just learned about about a month before this movie. Mm -hmm. So what I learned the most was us growing up that grew up in the 60s and 70s uh, definitely were not educated in American history classes about any of this. And that was the thing that was the most troublesome to me. Right. As in the future, I want to learn more about this. Right. And I think this needs to be communicated to all Americans what has happened. Then your point, Andrew, I think then we can start it doing more of a reflection. Mm -hmm. I think if we want to uh, pull back the curtain a little bit, this has been happening over many years with slavery in our country that we, we've learned a lot more about. I think we now need to reflect and get more information regarding about Native Americans and how uh, white people have... Uh, basically uh, to abuse some privileges and we need to be more educated on this subject matter. Yeah. Well, and I can hear you're getting pretty emotional, Dad. Is that, like, I think that's something that you must have been very moved by this movie. I don't know. I, I was more emotional regarding the lack of information I know. Mm -hmm. So that... Well, and that's a government issue in our country. Like, they are the ones who, you know, dictate the curriculum. I mean, as mom knows, as a retired school teacher, um, it's something that I admire in college is that you as an instructor get to, well, used to be able to, are supposed to be able to have academic freedom over your curriculum, even though I would, I would argue that colleges are starting to clamp down on what is being taught and these courses that are more focused on the indigenous um native americans people of color these courses are always now under scrutiny by the public like oh they're teaching critical race at colleges they're teaching white people to feel um less than yeah <laughs> that their white people should feel upset that they are in their skin um you know that they should not have a voice and it's just ridiculous to me because yeah, it's all about like you're saying dad you wish you had to had this knowledge mm -hmm. so we could actually put a face to people and communities that so many of us don't get to interact with the native american communities because mm -hmm. they're either on reservations they're either um in gaming, like I'm thinking of Connecticut and Mohegan Sun. I'm thinking of the Hamptons has a very robust tribe. Um, the Shinnecocks? Yeah, the Shinnecock um, Indians. Uh, yeah, with uh, oyster farming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
like you have to seek out that education. And it's something where like, you know, we all should, like I need to go to a Native American museum in Manhattan. I think we should definitely take that visit. Um, I know in Washington, DC, they have a museum. Um, it makes me like, I'm going to read the book, sure. definitely. Yeah. And because like sure. the only thing we really were taught and, you know, was early 2000s, um, was the Trail of Tears, you know, and that's when like, dad, you were talking about it, but the Atlant like the mid-Atlantic Native Americans were pushed further and further west into westward expansion, which is like how they end up in Oklahoma. Like they don't just end up in Oklahoma and, you know, um, the west, like those from the east were pushed and pushed and you know, so many were died because of illness and like they couldn't adapt to the climate. Um, so yeah, all of this is so important. Um, okay, so aspects of the movie, like we've covered our analysis of the story, the analysis of the storyline. Aspects of like the cinematography, the skill of um, you know, even like what happens with the frame of the movie, like how it's shown to us. Do you think there were parts where it moved nicely or there are parts where you wish it had sped up a little? Like maybe did we need to focus more on the Native American storylines? Do you think that there was too much focus on say the court scene? Like for me, that was, was my issue. I was just gonna say that. I was just going to say the court scene um was drug out <clears throat> I, I would i agree with you the, the 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 end of the movie definitely uh was the in my opinion the slow part of the movie um yes. that could definitely been cut some of that yeah well also like the interrogation got a little like just right. yes because i what i as we're talking what i had wished we had seen a little more of is i wanted to know well what was molly and anna brown like as children like what no. Or the daughters. I wish we had kind of seen more of the daughter story in flashbacks. Um, yes. Like, how did they get right. to... Because we don't really know. We know that they got into, well, what I've just read, the wealthiest uh, community per capita at that time. But how? Like, we never saw them actually, you know, mm -hmm. um, yes. get into that money. Or, like, we didn't actually see them growing up. In that, that's why when all these characters were introduced, I say two thirds into the movie, it started getting confusing mm -hmm. because you really did not have any type of way to connect mm -hmm. these relationships. Mm -hmm. It was a little disjointed from that standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it kind of begs the question. Um, but I think what we're all saying is it's good it was in one movie. Like, yeah. I could have seen a case where Martin Scorsese would have wanted two parts to the movie. Correct. Which, yes, you know, I don't know. I think I would have definitely seen another part. Like, if this was split into two, um, you know, sections, like the Osage Native Americans in part one, like how they mm -hmm. um, got to where they are, where Ernest comes to meet Molly, that could have been like the ending into part two, but you know, it's an epic film. So I understand like why they went for this three and a half hour. I think the experience. only negative, as you said, the interrogation and then the actual trial, yeah. that did drive a little bit. And trying to understand the relationships of the characters. That's what I'm looking at now is the cast. And Dave and I would say, Afterward, when we got, was it when we got home? Like, a, like we looked day. and or the next day, yeah. And it got like, confusing. wait, who was he? Yeah. What did they do? Yeah. yeah. So it was in certain characters. I, I just there was a lot of characters. There was a lot of characters. <laughs> you had to, you had to really keep. You had to pay attention. Yeah. Well, and I do want to return to what you said about Tosa, Oklahoma, because. Mm -hmm. We're about to, I'm going to take my mom for her birthday. Happy, I'm not going to say, she might not want me to say how old she is. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm going to take you to, well, nothing again. I mean, I would go to Oklahoma. Yeah, no, no. We've been out West. 
Yeah, just but, not to Oklahoma. Yeah, no, I was going to say I'm taking you um, to see the color purple. And um, the reason I bring that up is because it's about um, social class dynamics with um, Black Americans, but also like how um, during Jim Crow, Black Americans really got into farming in the South because some of them bought uh, the plantations that they had been slaves on. But then you also see these gendered, um, how patriarchy works in Seely's situation or Nettie. And, yeah. um, hmm. but like the wealth you also see in the color purple, like Tulsa, like dad said was Black Wall Street, but then, I you know, I didn't even know there why... was a documentary about it. Oh, my I mom just put off, it's called Dreamland, the burning of Black Wall Street. No. Um, oh, LeBron James was an executive producer. But, you know, why are we not being taught this history about um, marginalized communities being um, persecuted or even targeted? They're being targeted by the American government. You know, even, well, wait, oh, sorry. You no, know, we all need to learn about each other, especially... Um, not just cookie cutter, uh, I'll say it, cookie cutter white people only. No, we need to, we all need to learn about all different ethnicities and traditions and also different religions and their traditions. And I think it's important for us to be educated about those who are different from us and read books about those who are different from us and from each other. And I, I just feel like that's that will bring us together as a country. Mm -hmm. And that to me is important. Well, hopefully the success of this particular movie uh, will be able to uh, create the uh, environment where other uh, directors, producers uh, realize they can tell other stories mm -hmm. of other communities that have maybe not had their voice heard, mm -hmm. especially if they had success financially hopefully with this movie, uh, that will give uh, a catalyst to do others that have topics similar to this. Well, like the show Alaska Daily. Yes. Alaska Daily, which I hope comes back on, but was about um, Native American women that would go missing mm -hmm. that lived in Alaska. And nobody, like, I mean, their relatives obviously cared, but it seemed like they were just kind of... Yeah. Well, how did you for, feel about... Forgotten. Well, that's it. Yeah, well... That's rem terrible. Remember when um molly actually goes to dc i thought that was mm -hmm. such an yes. important scene yes and she actually meets the president yes what was the president's reaction in your opinion i i think uh it was one of those things that he I think he was really, welcoming wasn't he, he was welcoming yeah but was he actually going to do anything yeah. of substance to help the native american i don't think he wanted to make a big uh political statement there in dc but he must have done something to be able to get the fbi yes. to go out there that's so right. i think that's something where he didn't want to publicize his feelings because he know it might have been a mixed, no. a big mixed reaction but he wanted to do something basically low-key but get the job done, and that's I think what has happened. Oh, yes. When he Again, sent out un unpopular with the masses, but he but knew he the, right the right thing was that's true. to do it low key. Yeah, correct. Well, that's and true. don't you think that's our fight now? Is um, unfortunately it can't be done low key because those who want to limit education are not low key about book bans or board Terrible. school meeting fights or um, limiting your access to resources. So in my opinion, it's not time, like that model doesn't work now because the model now needs to be, these communities aren't going away and you need to learn about these histories, whether you want to or not. 
you know, our country is an ever-changing multicultural landscape, and that's a positive. This means we get to all learn together. And what is scaring those who are against certain books, those who are against educating people about their differences? That's, that's to me, I, I just wonder why, what's their end game? What are they trying to trying well to, isn't uh, it interesting by that that's that's yeah. terrible well isn't it interesting that none of their books they want to ban are right-wing books just saying yes think about that everyone um yeah it's terrible and i don't believe in book banning anyway like i don't even believe in book banning when it comes to like dictators that have been awful i think that freedom of expression is so important that um but when they're trying to ban LGBTQ books, The Color Purple, Beloved by Toni Morrison oh, has been the a popular one. The Bluest Eye. Yeah, The Bluest Eye. Um, you know. Oh, Amanda Gorman's. Oh, Amanda Gorman's oh. poetry. Um, books about those who are transgender. Like, all of that to me is you don't want to recognize people who are not white, uh, cisgender male um and christian yes and christian not christian yeah yes and I, i'll say it and and the other thing is they banned the book because the author's last name was gay i don't know if you know that or not in florida oh. because the name was g-a-y yes his last name was. oh gay. my gosh I had nothing to do with the content of the book so i guess we gay. can't watch the sound of music anymore because the captain's name is gay gay org so uh Oh, that's going to be our next the next one up for debate but some people want to stay in their little bubble mm -hmm. and being in their little bubble is not helpful well like dad said that's why this movie you know people I might know like people might say know. hey you know do movies really change the landscape and i would actually argue arts and culture this is why the humanities at universities and having my phd in english and in humanities Arts and culture is our number one touchstone for all who say, why would you like for all who say, why would you study arts and culture? What are you watching at night? What are you reading? Right. What are you listening to? That is all arts and culture. Like it is about representation. So right for dad, for myself, for my mom, Killers of the Flower Moon showed us nuances of Native Americans that we've never seen on this landscape before. The color purple is going to probably be the first time that viewers see, you know, Black women in love. I mean, this is important. Um, but this is why it's so important that so many saw it because it's successful and we know it takes a lot of money to make these movies. So I'm... I want to see the Tulsa, Oklahoma movie. I think we need that. I think we need, you know, representations of, like, I saw Moonlight. I thought that was an amazing queer Black film. It's probably my favorite queer film from the recent um, cast. So, yeah. Okay, so any final thoughts? Just, like, you know, how are you reflecting on even Thanksgiving? Right, like, how are you reflecting on what that holiday Can means? Can I go back to one thing? Yeah, go ahead, Mom. He was definitely my favorite character. Okay, well, say who it is, because <clears> they <throat> can't see your phone, Mom. Tatanka Means. Okay, okay, okay Tatanka Means. Um, an American actor and comedian. Yes. Yes. Um, and really, I mean, he was the undercover agent. Yes, he's the one who infiltrates um, I love Os that. into Osage with the FBI. Well, then, um, he yeah. was one of our favorites. Yeah. Okay, so what are your okay, thoughts on what Thanksgiving, like maybe when you were growing up, what Thanksgiving meant to you, and how do you think of Thanksgiving now? Um, Thanksgiving means to me uh, being thankful for various things in our in our lives, in my life. Yeah. Um, Surrounded by people that I care about, and they care about me, and just reflecting. I think Thanksgiving 
It's about reflecting and being grateful. So we've moved away from the fantasy of the Puritans. No. Like, that's what I'm saying. Do you oh, think we've oh. moved away from... Remember in Adam's Family, there's that scene, which I think is incredible too. You know what I'm talking about, where there's the play they put on and it's like this Thanksgiving play and Wednesday is a Native American and she like explains the whole like actual reality of my um the reality of what uh, happened with the genocide of the native americans and then um like goes after the puritans but right the fantasy was that the puritans um were peacemakers with the native americans and gave them a feast with oh, a turkey God. which we even know turkeys weren't even like uh uh indigenous or like would have been part of that um puritan landscape like they wouldn't have eaten the food we eat wouldn't have been eaten first of all they're not eating <laughs> even though i like sweet potato casserole i don't think they were making you know marshmallow sweet potato casserole um but i have to say i haven't really like and i think this is because of the history we're taught of the native americans this is a positive I don't see that fantasy as much anymore. Like, oh, let's wear Puritan costumes. No. Yeah. But, okay. So, you know, how are you both, like, dad, how are you now thinking about what you're going to do next? Like, what do you want to research? Like, what I did this- I would like yeah. to uh, do the audio book uh, from the author, David, uh, how do you say this place? Grant. Grant. Grand. Yeah, I would. That's probably my next step. I like to uh, do the audio book using Libby. Yeah, probably using Libby to do that. Yeah, my dad loves audio books, which is good. So, uh, that'd be good. Libby and, is an app that'd be, for those who yeah never for public used libraries. It. It's yes, great. It is yeah. great. Um, we all use. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but we all are part of a Libby, so we can e see each other's audio books. Um. So yeah, that's a great idea. And I'm going to, you know, read, um, the subtitle is called The Osage Murders and the Birth of the FBI. Yeah. Um, because remember, J. Edgar Hoover creates yeah, right. the FBI. Um, yes. The FBI is very new in our history. Um, so yeah, I feel like we covered so much. I want to wish you all out there just healthy holidays, happy holidays. I agree with my mom. Thanksgiving is about us empowering each other, spreading knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and like, it does not have to be. And I actually would, in my opinion, argue we shouldn't be stuck in these fantasies of like, we shouldn't be stuck in the fantasy of, oh, the Native Americans were treated that Pocahontas like myth, like it, it is very damaging in my opinion to think that um, like the white settlers, even though like John Smith, I know, you know, there might've been some good intentions marrying Pocahontas. It doesn't mean at the end of the day that they weren't going to take away their land and weren't going to give them rights, you know? First of all, not only did they take over their land, they forced them West and then they even brought in illnesses that the Native Americans did not have here in, as an indigenous illness. And now they're being killed. Um, so I know it's heavy, but I think it's also we need to know reality because just like why I think it's important we talk about Black reparations for slavery, we should talk about Native American reparations because I think we need to heal. Like, in my opinion, the only way we're healing as a country is if we face our reality and move together forward. Like we can do I it. Agree. I you agree. You know, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. But and we cannot be banning no topics that make us uncomfortable. No. If a if a parent or an adult doesn't want their child to read the book, don't let them read the book. Yeah. That's all. Because guess what? <laughs> like it. we're going to be made uncomfortable by hearing um if my opinion is if we're going to be made uncomfortable by hearing volatile, hateful speech um, that goes against marginalized people, which we hear all the time now on the campaign trail, not going to say the specific names, but there's a lot of them. Then why can we not make people uncomfortable at actual everyday lived experiences of identities that they might not encounter in their everyday life, but they need to know that they exist? 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's wrong with knowing history? Yeah. It's a fact. Exactly. Deal with it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, happy, healthy holidays, everyone. Happy and holidays. Yes. Yeah. And I'll get my parents. We'll have to do this again. Maybe when we see um, you know, the color purple, we'll talk about, you know, seeing it in our experience. So Bye, everyone. Bye. Stay safe and healthy out there. Yeah.